Hi, my name is Hugo Wong, and I work at the Building and Safety Standards Branch. We're part of the government of British Columbia responsible for building codes and standards. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation about proposed changes to the BC Building Code, whether you're in the office, in your truck, or wherever you may be. I'm recording this on the territory of the Lekwungen people, now known as the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations. We've been so fortunate to start building relationships with a wide range of Indigenous peoples and nations, and we hope to continue sharing ideas and cooperating with humility and respect for years to come. This video presentation, which is also being released as a series of podcast episodes, will go over two proposals to change the BC Building Code to make new buildings cleaner and more energy efficient. We're considering higher baseline energy efficiency requirements, as well as a new building carbon pollution standard that's structured similarly to the BC Energy Step Code today. If you'd rather read this presentation instead of listen to it, this will also be released as a PowerPoint with speaking notes intact, so you can read along. If you want to skip straight to the building code language and supporting materials, you can find all that at gov.bc.ca slash building codes, or by clicking the link in the PowerPoint. These presentations are meant to be a primer or a recap, and they won't go over everything. The written resources will go into more detail, and I'll cover those a little later on. As a reminder, please don't watch or listen to this if you're operating heavy machinery, power tools, or in any other potentially hazardous situation. That's why these resources are available on demand, so you can save them for a better time. If you're accessing this presentation, that means the two proposals are out for public review. For six weeks, people will have a chance to review the proposed building code language and provide feedback by emailing building.safety at gov.bc.ca. Our primary purpose is to receive granular and technical comments, such as minor revisions to targets and values, and comments about scope or application. But we also want to reach people who want to learn more about cleaner, more energy efficient buildings, even if they don't work with the building code every day. In many cases, building code language can be dense, and it can be hard to understand what the code changes are and how they could affect you. That's why we're introducing more supplementary material, like this, so we can reach a broader audience and receive their comments too. After you review the building code proposals and submit your comments, the Building and Safety Standards branch will consider them when writing the final code language. The branch will then provide recommendations to the minister responsible for housing, who makes the final decision about what the new building code language will look like. Although public review is six weeks long, the Building and Safety Standards branch has been developing these building code proposals with industry, local governments, utilities, and other parties for months or years leading up to this point. The performance-based energy targets have been public since the step code was launched in 2017, while others, such as the Building Carbon Pollution Standard, have been in development since November 2020 in close collaboration with partners. There will be five episodes in total, covering the topics you see on the slide. It's designed to be consumed in order, but if you're primarily interested in large or small buildings, you can just skip to the particular episode that's most relevant to you and still get the information you need. Each episode is under 20 minutes long, so you can take it in chunks. If you have experience with the BC Energy Step Code, these BC Building Code proposals should be familiar to you. If you aren't yet familiar with the BC Energy Step Code, this presentation and the online materials for public review can be a good start. For more energy efficiency tips, talk to your coworkers or friends and check out the vast amount of previously published information and training from educational institutions or trade associations. If you're a member of such an organization, they may have specific educational material and resources for you. First, the highlights. The province is proposing two changes to the BC Building Code. The first is to make new buildings 20% more energy efficient throughout BC. We're proposing to do this by having small buildings meet what's currently step three of the BC Energy Step Code, and large buildings meet step two, with a few exceptions and changes that I'll go over. Our eventual goal is, by 2032, to have all new buildings in BC be net zero energy ready, which is about 80% more energy efficient than a building built to the 2018 BC Building Code. To get more specific, a net zero energy ready building is ready to produce as much energy as it consumes if on-site renewable energy is installed. The second proposed building code change is to introduce opt-in building carbon pollution standards, which will reduce the greenhouse gas emissions from new buildings. 
As a note, the terms greenhouse gases and carbon will be used interchangeably in this presentation. For our purposes, they mean the same thing. Our eventual goal is by 2030 to have all new buildings in BC be zero carbon, meaning they do not emit carbon pollution once they're built. Let's start by reviewing the current BC Energy Step Code, which is the basis of our code proposal. Just to recap, the BC Energy Step Code is an optional compliance path in the BC Building Code that local governments can use, if they wish, to incentivize or require a level of energy efficiency in new construction that goes above and beyond the requirements of the current base building code. Builders can meet or exceed the step code requirements of their community. The idea was to have four or five steps that builders and local governments could choose from, each with increasingly higher energy efficiency levels. The energy step code introduced a performance-based code, which requires you to meet an outcome rather than tell you how to achieve it. For example, instead of a long list of prescriptive requirements for insulation, a performance approach specifies outcomes like building air tightness and energy use requirements. And it's now up to builders to decide which materials and methods work best. This performance-based approach has two purposes. First, it encouraged the construction industry to create more airtight homes, combine energy-efficient elements like windows and insulation effectively, and to collaborate with an energy modeler and trades early in the development process so the building could be energy efficient and cost effective from the start. All these small changes add up to keep a building warmer in the winter, it reduces noise from the outdoors, and it can save you money on your energy bill. The associated air tightness test provides a level of quality assurance, so you get the intended level of energy efficiency. The second purpose was to transform the building sector over time. The Energy Step Code proposed a 15-year timeline for increases to the base code minimum, which gave lead time for people to prepare accordingly. The idea was, as builders and governments learn to make more energy-efficient buildings, the lower steps and lower base code minimums would fall away. Now that 2022 is here, we are proposing that base building code requirements for most buildings should require 20% more energy efficiency than they do today. If you're already building to a step 3 for small buildings, or step 2 for large buildings, then the proposed building code changes should not be too surprising, and you can largely stay the course. But, even if you're familiar with the Energy Step Code, I would encourage you to listen to the entire series, because there are some tweaks to specific metrics and a new prescriptive option for Part 9 builders in the proposal. Although the proposed code language we've released covers most topics we wanted to discuss, there's one piece that's still under development, and that's how to make some unique building types more energy efficient, namely log homes and small homes in cold climates. We've heard that they have some unique issues that stop them from meeting the 20% better energy efficiency goal, so we're currently developing adjusted requirements to improve their energy efficiency in a practical way. This proposal is not quite ready for this public review period, so we are considering alternatives, like a temporary exemption, until we develop a more permanent approach. This hasn't been finalized yet, and we'll have more to say on that in the coming months. Now let's move on to a quick summary of the building carbon pollution standard. We're proposing to introduce a series of carbon levels, similar to the energy step code, where new buildings could measure their carbon output without reductions, or meet medium, low, or zero carbon ready requirements. In general, builders would meet the targets by decarbonizing their space heating or domestic hot water until they meet the required level. Local governments could choose the level they wish to meet in their community, and builders could choose to meet or exceed those local requirements. Just like the Energy Step Code, the minimum standard will rise gradually until all new buildings are zero carbon. Heating, cooling, and hot water equipment make up most of a building's greenhouse gas emissions, so choosing the right energy source for those uses will be key to reducing emissions. While the proposed code language would limit greenhouse gases from buildings, it will not distinguish between energy sources like electricity, natural gas, or district energy. The targets could be met using several different types of energy sources, which I'll go over in the subsequent episodes. So with all that said, the proposed changes may affect how you do your work. If you're already building to the BC Energy Step Code as a builder or community, the changes I'm about to describe will sound pretty familiar. But there is still something new for everyone. If the energy efficiency requirements for buildings increase, more builders and construction industry participants will have to consider air tightness testing, energy modeling, 
and compliance reports. You may have to start collaborating with an energy advisor or energy modeler to do that energy modeling and air tightness testing and start collaborating with the client and the building designer earlier. This can have some side benefits, like reducing the amount of last minute change orders and lowering overall construction costs, but we can go over those effects a bit later. These changes to the base BC building code and the opt-in building carbon pollution standard may also affect local bylaws and incentive structures, depending on how they're written. After listening to the following episodes, you may discover new ways the code changes could affect you, which will be important to consider during and after the public review process. There are four more episodes. Episode 2 introduces basic energy efficiency and carbon pollution concepts. Episode 3 goes over proposed changes to large buildings, also known as Part 3 buildings. Episode 4 goes over proposed changes to small buildings, also known as Part 9 buildings. While Episode 5 shares some successful strategies that industry and local governments could consider. If you want more information about any of these concepts, there are more detailed guides and supporting information published on gov.bc.ca slash building codes. For all buildings, there are data tables that contain costing estimates and examples of how buildings could meet the proposed carbon targets. The 2022 update to the Metrics Research Report also contains even more detailed costing estimates and technical examples for energy efficiency and greenhouse gas reduction. There's also a Best Practices Bulletin that contains preliminary guidance on how a local government could reference the carbon standard, and how the new energy efficiency and carbon building code language could affect local bylaws. An email with information about this public review was sent to anyone signed up to receive BC Building Code emails. The same information was also included in the most recent BC Energy Step Code email newsletter. Again, all of this is available on gov.bc.ca slash building codes. That's it for this episode. Up next, introducing energy efficiency and greenhouse gas concepts.